Welcome to our weekly roundup of key economic and business developments in Sri Lanka. I'm Nishani Figuera, and here are this week's top stories. President in Japan courts entry to regional trading blocks and LRT project to restart. $350 million loan from ADB as IMF's deputy managing director arrives. Policy rates cut, May tourist arrivals to beat target. In our main story this week, during President Ranil Vikramasinghe's visit to Japan, he urged Japan to extend its tripartite partnership with India and Bangladesh to improve the economies of the Bay of Bengal region, including the southern states of India and Sri Lanka. The President also impressed on Japan to consider Sri Lanka's membership to the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. This is a free trade agreement among 15 Asia-Pacific nations. Vikramasinghe also discussed resuming Japan-funded light rail transit project, expressing his regret of its unilateral cancellation by the former president Gotabe Rajapaksa. As per Economy Next, the project is likely to recommence only after debt restructuring and Sri Lanka starts repaying its foreign loans to come out of default. Diplomatic ties between Sri Lanka and Japan were strained due to the cancellation of the LRT and East Container Terminal projects. On Monday, Cabinet spokesman Bandulu Gunawardhana said that going forward, any change or cancellation of a project could only be done with the approval of the Parliament. On Monday, the Asian Development Bank approved a $350 million loan to provide budget support to Sri Lanka for economic stabilization. This is a part of a broader package of financial assistance to Sri Lanka and was enabled as a result of the country entering into the IMF funding facility. Meanwhile, IMF's Deputy Managing Director Kenji Okamura is in Sri Lanka this week. Okamura held talks with the President on Wednesday on what was described as primarily focused on the progress of the program between Sri Lanka and the IMF and the ongoing debt restructuring negotiations. On Thursday, the Monetary Board of the Central Bank cut policy interest rates. Standing lending and deposit rates were reduced by 250 basis points. A steady decline in credit to the private sector, as well as disinflation, since September has allowed for such a decision. In May, inflation declined to 25.2%, and appreciating Sri Lankan rupee has helped to ease price increases of goods and services. Dr. Nandalal Veerasinghe, Governor of the Central Bank, had expressed confidence that inflation would decline to single digits by year-end. For more on this story, we spoke with Kuhan Vinyagasundaram, Fund Manager at CTCLSA Asset Management. The Central Bank of Sri Lanka's decision to relax monetary policy, which is the first of such moves since the beginning of the economic crisis last year, indicates a shift in focus uh, from restoring macroeconomic stability to stimulating economic growth. The central bank's decision comes, back, comes on the back of uh, a faster than expected uh, deceleration of inflation and a benign outlook for domestic price pressures uh, given subdued economic activity and uh, the recent appreciation of the LKR which is expected to rein in imported inflation and a higher statistical base effect. We expect market interest rates to uh, decline in line with uh, the recent reduction in policy interest rates immediately. And we expect a steeper decline in market interest rates following the announcement and finalization of the ongoing domestic debt optimization program. Foreign fund flows to the government securities market uh, improved trade balance and uh, uh, budgetary support from international development partners such as the Asian Development Bank are expected to ease uh, uh, balance of payment pressures in the near term. However, gradual relaxation of import controls and uh, capital flow controls as well as uh, an improvement in demand, gradual improvement in demand in the second half of this year is expected to exert pressure uh, on the currency towards the end of the year. In our weekly tourism update, during the first 28 days of May, 75,769 tourists arrived, pushing the year-to-date visitor numbers to almost 517,000. Daily arrivals in the month were 2,076. The monthly visitors are to break the 76,000 target. In May, India accounted for 28% or 20,971 arrivals, followed by Russia, Germany and the UK. Meanwhile, the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority is exploring the potential of marine tourism in Sri Lanka as a part of a master plan for 2024 to be developed with the assistance of the ADB. 
Priyanta Fernando, SLTDA chairman, speaking to Economy Next, said that a marine tourism consultant will also be in Colombo on Saturday, whose expertise is being sought. In other news, on Wednesday, weekly fuel quotas were increased. The upward revision ranged from 15 litres to three wheelers and 125 litres for lorries. Meanwhile, the price of 92 octane petrol was cut by 15 rupees, whilst 95 octane and super diesel prices were increased. There was a 50 rupee reduction in kerosene price. Sri Lanka and the Korea Institute for Advancement of Technology signed an agreement to develop two floating one megawatt solar power plants in the Ratnapura district. The Korea Institute provided the $5.3 million grant to install two floating solar power plants on the surface of the Kiri Banwava in Monragala and the Chandrika Vava Reservoir. Now let's take a look at the weekly movement of the All Share Price Index and the SNPSL20 index at the Colombo Stock Exchange. At the Treasury bill auction held on Wednesday, yields on all maturities fell slightly. Bids amounting to 271 billion were received, of which 160 billion rupees were accepted. The Sri Lankan rupee appreciated against the dollar this week, with the central bank's indicative mid-spot rate ranging between 295 and 299. The central bank has stayed away from purchasing US dollars, thus allowing the rupee to strengthen. Since the start of May, the currency has gained almost 8%. And that's a wrap for this week. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel at the link below for more updates on economic and business developments in Sri Lanka. Until we see you again next week, thank you for watching. Stay safe.